Hello and welcome back to FSL Dota 2 Open. My name is Holler and I'm with Arthur and we're going to go into game two. How are you doing today, Arthur? Good afternoon. I'm good, sir. Um, we're excited to cast this game two between Amazons and also Lukiami. Interesting fact, Amazon just came off a very long game. They were down 24k in gold deficit and they managed to come back. So that could give them some very good momentum and that makes me very excited to see how can they ride onto that momentum and keep going from here. Is it going to be momentum or is it going to be like uh, a time where, you know, you might be tired, right? Like, I think fatigue might be one of those factors, especially since we have so many games coming up. But would that actually factor into this or are they just Dota players at the end of the day? Mm, it depends on how their sleep is yesterday night, I would say. I mean, I mean, that was just a game one, right? I think game one, normally you, you'd be warming up yourself. And if you go through this really insane comeback, I would think that set up a tone for your entire day that you are on this very high confidence status so i hope that the fatigue is not kicking in just yet because normally i think fatigue for dollar players it kicked in you know maybe at game three game four mm -hmm. i hope i hope this is still okay for them yeah and uh but coming back from 24k again that's gonna be a big big shot in the arm in the sense of just like re-energizing you and putting you back into this game and this in the tournament right and this is a double elimination one where you know you don't you have really no room to maneuver seeing as that all the games except for the grand finals is going to be a best of one so you need to win out and you need to win out early but before we go into the draft let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors of intel tokenized exchange and yahoo and let's hop into the draft and see what you know lujiami and amazons of vimiscura i will never pronounce Diet that correctly I, i'm gonna i don't even know how to start with that one yeah, I just I just did a quick Google search on what uh, Temisira is. Apparently, that is the place that the Amazon's warrior lived at. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, it's the origin of the Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that fits the FSL um, idea uh, very perfectly, right? Because you know we are saying everyone can be your own heroes, and this is definitely the name for the for the game. Yeah, and I, I mean, to be honest, I thought it was one of those things where it's like the MY is in Malaysia and then Syrah or, you know what I mean? Like just piecing it together, but maybe I'm just, you know, 200, you know, IQ, well, minus 200 IQing it <laughs> at this point and just overthinking it at this. Negative, negative 200 IQ. <laughs> all right, you don't have to rub it in, all right? <laughs> Tide Hunter. All right, so the draft is underway. We've seen a, a decent amount of bans. Uh, Puck is being banned in every single one so far, as well as Ursa. Uh, but what what kind of sticks out to you, at least in this draft? I'm just, first of all, I'm very interested in knowing how, why they banned out of Puck now from Lujami We're in the first ban because that is definitely not um, anything that we have seen lately. So maybe there's a amazing partner player from Amazon here. That's why they re respect ban it. But in terms of ban and pick wise, I think pretty normal stuff. I like how Amazon's they are they banned out the Dank Stalker to open up their two backline supports. I think that's an amazing protect ban. Mm -hmm. But for me myself, I'm not a big fan of two backline remaining. supports. Um, but they by Amazon's they are definitely picking tight hunting to protect pick. that as well. And TB is one of the heroes that can also make use of the backline support. So I guess so far Amazon's they are all right. Lujami's side, they have more of a meta pick sort of uh, uh, sort of state. So Snapfire plus Centaur, very solid lane. Grimshock plus and one is going to be pretty remain. solid as well. So it seems that Lujami, they are just putting a lot of the meta Five heroes in pieces remain. into this draft together. Mm -hmm. And, and we're seeing a lot of similarities, at least, you know, the meta that's kind of going to develop even in this tournament alone. But uh, the Centaur being there, Snapfire is also there. But now we're seeing a Gyro and Grimstroke. And aside from the fact that both of these heroes start with a letter G, what is that synergy that these two have? Um, well, I, I guess Grimstroke, normally you would want to be pairing with a mini, mini hero because you want to ink, make yourself an ink swell. But I guess in this case, Gyro got not only good, not only the early active they can active active activeness he can bring to the team also it's a great tie under killer as well on the lane so rocket barrage into the homing missile plus the scream show slow coming out from, from the stroke of fate i think that's gonna be really that troublesome for the time to deal with so i i, I like this lane even though Dragonkota is not the traditional hero that Grimshot would want to pair with but it this gives them a lot of killing potential to kill the time 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and they're going to need some way to deal with this green old watermelon because uh, he's just going to create a lot of space for Terrorblade, make it very difficult to get even close to him. But, I mean, dealing with the Terrorblade, do they have enough potential burst? Do they have the stuns to kind of just, I mean, yeah, you have the silence and stuff like that. You have ways to kind of work around it, but is it enough? And do you want to, is there like a hero that kind of you want to pick out just to kind of deal with this team? Ten seconds remaining. I will say, yeah, because normally you will see hero uh, teams Five picking heroes remaining. with burst damage so that they can quickly bring, bring down the terror blade tiny one of the most one of the most uh, uprising me me hero right now is still in the pool i think lujami if they want to go for tiny is a pretty damn good tiny pick against rubik lion terror blade that's a lot of heroes to be killed easily to the avalon uh avalanche toss combo another hero um co-op is getting banned by amazon so they are removing all the tb killers there's still Lina in the pool. There's still Lash in the pool. So I, I would say the Ujiami, they still have a lot of, of um, hero choices left in the pool for them to pick up. It really depends on what is their comfort pick here. Okay, okay. We're going to have to see what they play out. But again, it, it seems to be very... Um kind of similar at least in heroes thus far in the sense that you've got the centaur the beefy guy up front you know matched up with the tide as well so you just have those guys and then you have kind of like the uh the backliner slash i mean gyro tb can be in almost anywhere in your face doing damage but like it seemed to be very similar in playstyles yeah that's definitely true they both have the tanky offlaners to protect their winning condition but i would say Lujami, they look a lot more explosive compared to amazon still because of their early levels their early aggressiveness that they, that can be lead by the gyrocopter with this last pick oh it's a bb that's cool so that doesn't fit um the the condition that we want which is a hero that can comes in with burst damage Bristleback is a super tanky hero. His damage is relatively slower. But one thing about Bristleback is he can invade jungle very easily. And it kind of fits what's the what uh the Rujami's previous four heroes because they want to play fast. And Bristleback is one of the best heroes that can lead his team to play be, to be playing very fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I, I think that Gyro kind of gave that away in the sense that we're gonna play a little bit early to mid-game and just kind of focus our attention on that. So it kind of does fit in with it. Um, obviously, Bristle and Centaur, when you guys have those guys up front, it's like, oh, which one do I choose? You know, <laughs> the rocker, the hammer, and the kind of dealing with this, right? Both of those guys are very, very sturdy, makes it very difficult for to get in. Amazons are going to want to sit back and farm, make sure that TB can kind of carry them in the late game. But I don't know, even know if they're going to get to that late game. Yeah, they'll, they'll, have, to, they'll have to pick someone with some deep push potential and also a, uh, an answer to the BB and Centaur because they have no burst damage right now from Amazons. They'll have to wait for Terrorblade's item to come up for them to have enough damage to kill the three cores. So I'll say Wiper seems like a pretty good pick here for Amazons. It's a nature counter to Bristol back, but okay, they go for Necroforce. Another tanky hero's killer. Mm, Paris pretty, has some pretty good synergy with the Lion Finger, except for that. So that's okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you have potential, you have the Reaper Scythe to kind of make sure that Bristle, uh, uh, you, you turn him into Bristle Front when you can kind of just lock him into place, so to speak. So you would definitely have w ways around it. But um, one thing that, and, and I know that Kazumi is a Rubik player, but w you picked it early, you picked it into Snapfire, but getting those steals, I mean, uh, like, not the best spells to steal, I would say. You know, I mean, they're all kind of mid average You don't have like the black hole, so to speak. Yeah, I would say the best heroes to steal spells from would be the Grimshook. Anything from Grimshook is pretty good. Or the Stampede from Centaur, that's basically the best spell here for them yeah. to pick up. That's, if if they can manage to steal the Stampede, that would be the counter initiation from... That would be the retreat from the Soulbind of Grimshook. So, yeah, I would say, like you said, like both teams, they are drafting in a very same style. But looking at the hero choices, though, I would definitely go with uh, Lugjami here. Because I, I do think that their, their heroes fit the meta really well that you want to be playing fast. And you have two heroes to invade jungle. Amazons, they have one Reaper side to kill one of the tanky heroes. But what if that's, they run out of damage for another one? That would be a big problem. That would be, you know, all the basket in all the eggs in the terribly basket for him to carry, for him to do, do the damage. And he needs a lot of time for that. So I guess you talk about the invasion and then obviously uh, T TB does need to get that farm. But I mean, in, in terms of laning, who is the most important piece of the puzzle from Amazons to kind of make sure that Terrorblade has that space? I will say Tide and the Necropros. Like they have to go 50-50 in their lane and they have to find their ways to stabilize the lane so that 
the game remains slow and the slow the, the slow the game is, the better it is for the TV to, to just farm up to his S and Y Scotty timing and that's the time TV really wants to shine. So before that, it's just the four heroes of Amazon oh, trying to buy time for TV to hit that pick without losing too much of a mech control and go lead. Prepare for okay, battle. okay. All right, but uh, in terms of lineup alone, which do you like? Lujami. I, I just like the they have hero, they have Roshan potential, they have tower pushing potential, they have the potential to snowboard and take control of the enemy triangle as well. So I, I just feel like they are, they are, they are heroes and the draft take a lot of boxes, especially with the last pick BB. It kind of like the, it, it's kind of the gotcha pick here for for Amazon because they don't have any really good reliable damage for this BB. Mm -hmm. All right, for this baby, huh? You call him out, your baby or BB? BB, my BB. Uh, all right, okay. That would have been super awkward if you said it. <laughs> <laughs> all right nonetheless they've got a smoke here they're looking to wrap around um they might catch something as they get to the high ground but i think that's going to be the extent of this oh they're going to walk right in angel's going to be the one that tanks this it, it was a little afk for a second angels oh the pearl strike out no, or the first spike excuse me only hits on the gyro and they're going to give up first blood there yeah i think angel could be like just communicating with her team looking here and there and she did not seem like she saw the smoke coming out from Lujami. Yeah. That being said, the Grim Show went for level one Inkswell, and then we saw Sam Fire going for a fire snap cookie at level one. That's not the ideal. That's not really the ideal skill that you want to be scaling up at level one. So that's a bit of win for Amazon there, I would say. Because Sam Fire normally you go for this Blightstone level one, and you want to be abusing that with the Leo Shredder level one so that you can just team in some really good uh, cheap damage. But because of this cookie, the harassment power from this type right, would be decreased so much in the level one. Yeah, and uh, I don't even know if that was the cookie even used. It was, right? Yeah, it was. Okay. All right, nonetheless, uh, Kazumi here will just kind of trade with uh, Barita. And Kazumi went with Fabolt, so she's going to be a little bit better prepared for the laning phase. Yeah, she has two fair fire as well, so she's all for, she's all for the trade hits here, first team. Angel is already pushing out the lane, so that's good for them. If they can hit level 2 first, that would give them some really good um, timings to go for the early kills. And, uh, okay, one thing to note is Angel, yes, gave up first blood, but she gave it up to the Centaur, at least in terms of gold. I mean, yeah, Louis, uh, YS right here has got a little bit more XP, but it, it's not like giving up first blood to someone in the lane. So, small wins. Yeah, that's not the, that's not the, the worst scenario for them. That's that's definitely okay for them. Uh, Tander is still as strong, even though after after feeding the first split, Kuzmi is already pulling the speed cam. So that's gonna help them um, secure the lane equilibrium back to their favor. Yeah, I like that. Just push out the lane, try to get the quick level two, then start pulling the lane back, and then just kind of you know it, it's a little different from the last one where we didn't really see much pulling. Right? It was kind of just you know wherever the creeps who ended up, and Jill just got super fat. So this is a little bit different from the last game. So we're, we're seeing just how teams play the the laning phase. Yeah, this is the basic the I would say the formula right now to play the off lane. You always want to be push pushing first and then pull the big cam, mm -hmm. and you know, as a post five, the biggest the biggest restaurant possibility is really to stop the position four from pulling the backhand once they are pushing. So mm -hmm. Berida here definitely he missed a bit of chance and kills me after with the with this pull he's gonna feel so good as he will be getting some extra cash from this big camp and also look at Angel. Cookie is a little off the market. Obviously, the rocket will connect, and they're going to do some damage, and they shred through him, and Angel goes down the second time already. And Kazumi, yes, you talked about the pull and how great that was, but if you can kill the offlaner, that's that's a win. Talk yeah, that missing. just completely defeats the purpose of pulling there. I think when it happens, it's very important the offlane to be playing a bit safer for a while because you know that the creeps are pushing into the tower. So just be a bit safe. Tyrant's positioning there was a bit just too cocky and he, and we talked about how good Jarrapata is as a Thailand killer and that just demonstrates where it's perfectly. I think it was attack. Angel just being like, embodies, I'm going to be a fruit. I'm going to be the watermelon. I'm this big tanky, you know, this Tide Hunter. Nobody can kill me, but, you know, at the end of the day, the watermelon, you can crack that thing open, especially since you're only level two. So, um, a little bit of a misplay there. Hopefully she can bounce back in as she TPs back into the lane. Oh, seems like they want to make a move again. They are both level 3. Oh, 
the little shredder, the rocket, that's going to do some work. And YS, they just focus on the cookie, but it goes a little farther. But, you know, that's the position that she wants to be in. And Angel, solo, not really having much of a chance, goes down for a third time. <laughs> At this point in my pubs, I think the Tidehunter was like, all right, I'm just going to AFK jungle. Yeah, I mean, not only he died for the third time, he does not have TP to go back to the lane as well. So that's the biggest thing. He'll have to do the walk of shame. And by the time he reached this laning phase again, Jackopter is going to be level 4. So this is going to be so hard for Angel. And I don't know what can, what, 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 what can they do here, except for Rubik going to stack some jungles for Tyranter to recover. But that's not happening just yet, too. Yeah, that was a, this has been a bit of a rough start here. Uh, not to say that it's uh, unsalvageable, but um, definitely they got to, their work cut out for them. Now, if we're looking at the top lane here, uh, TB, Lion, Centaur, Grimstroke, what do, what do you think about this matchup? To be, I think this is where Lujami really want to be pressing a lot, putting a lot of pressure on. TB, you know that this hero, he's going to be hitting the jungle at level 5, level 6 with points on metamorphosis and also the conjure image. So it, the point is really how do you pressure the TB before he gets to the jungle point? Oh, but the rocket, yeah, that's going to home in on Kazumi. He's got the self, so it's going to get as much life as possible, but he's all by herself now. Even Angel's like, oh, <laughs> look at that fool dying in the lane. And just two kills and two assists right now. Even though he only, she only has eight last hits, but these kills are really, um, these kills are really giving her a lot of return in terms of XP and also gold as well. If you look at her net worth, she's top in his in his team right now. Yeah, and uh, I mean, she's been able to get all of these kills, and she's definitely pushing along. But look at okay, we haven't talked about the the mid lane here, but Gabriella top in terms of the net worth. Um, doing a pretty good job against this Bristol, who's third place, which isn't that far off. But uh, what do you think about this lane mid lane matchup? I, I I honestly haven't seen this matchup for 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 any time. Like uh, Necroforce, she's having a lot of XP and one uh, CS and one T share, thirty five to twenty three of the BB. So she's definitely feeling pretty good. She might be able to threaten and kill here. Oh, Bristol back, gotta be really careful. She yeah. almost died. He al she almost died there to the Reaper side. That was very close. But speaking of somebody dying, Capitana goes down. Grimstroke will take that one and will end up killing the courier as well. And TB was just like, what happened here? Lost my courier, lost my lion. I mean, not a good, not a good phase of events. Yeah, this is the thing that they have to be constantly doing. Just rinse and repeat, harass the TB. Make, make sure that she has to buy a lot of self or she has to force the lion to buy a lot of self for her. And now TB is going into the jungle, and this is what Lujami wants to see. TB going to jungle level four is not the best, and if this, if Lujami can make use of this siege creep wave and push down the tower, that would be really great for them. And once again, Angel yes. falls at the bottom side of lane, and Gyro another kill for her. Yeah, that's been super rough already, and I, honestly, I'm thinking Angel just needs to give up the lane. Like, Kazumi, maybe you just stick around, just sap as much XP as possible, just salvage as much as you can. I don't think you can deal with them. I think you need to focus on the other lane. Yeah, good thing is Jaira is not a very good tower pusher, but this siege lane, though, they definitely have to... Oh my god, Angel, he's walking right back into the Jaira! Okay, all right. Doesn't realize it is the Rocket Barrage is going to connect as well. And Angel almost walked back into it, but she's under tower. So Wyas uh, has got to be a little bit careful. She's going to salve up now, but Angel, wow, half-life already. Yeah, Angel got to be a, a bit more patient here because she was running right into the territory of this enemy, of her enemy. And she took a lot of unnecessary damage there. But it's all good as long as she, she's able to clear out this siege wave protect the tower, that would be pretty good for them. Alright, so Angel, you didn't have a great lane. I think you've died, what, uh, four times already, but it looks like it's gonna go Soul Ring, Brown Boots, into Blink. Are you okay with that build order? I'm not sure if he, she really needs to Blink that early. It feels like she would need some aura items, like the may, maybe the pipe or the Garden Greaves, any sort of things like that that can keep his team alive. I think that would be a lot more valuable compared to the naked blink dagger rush that she's thinking about now. Agreed, agreed. I, I, I couldn't. Th I think pipe is just 
amazing, especially against that lineup, because you gotta mitigate as much damage as you can against that uh, the gyro Radiant's who's gonna run up on you. Mm -hmm. under uh, all right, TB on the other hand, um, first big item Gyre's Falcon Blade. Has been killed. Are you okay with that build order? Yeah, that's okay. I think uh, some some of the Terror Blade they like to have a casual ring of Basilius. Mm -hmm. For the mana regen, some of them like to go for Falcon Blade. It's just really player preference, but Capitana uh, is in the wrong side of this. They do get the stun, the ink is on point, and Metamorphosis is now going to be committed. And they're going to try to focus in. Nice two man Earth Spike. TPs are coming, and it looks like they baited him out. Kang thought that, you know, she was strong there, but uh, K uh, Capitana here or KPFC, I'm just going to call her KFC because I'm just hungry. Uh, but it looks like they're looking for it, and they do get the Earth Spike from downtown, and they end up securing the kill on Kang. Man, Capitana made that all happen. She was using the mana drain to bait them in to to commit on her, and then she runs into the tower range and get the double stun, double impale on Centaur plus Grimshock. They managed to kill the Grimshock first. Necros for, Frost TP down, unfortunately, did not have the Reaper, and then another impale lands on the Centaur to bring her to bring her down. That was really well played from Capitana. And, and they really needed that, right? It was not looking good there. And then all of a sudden getting two kills like that just really helps them out. And it, it creates space for Angel. Okay, Stampede is now going to be used. They found Terrorblade. I don't think he has... Oh, he does have Sunder. And she's going to go and she's going to cast it. But it's on Centaur, the tankiest of all. But uh, it's one versus four. Not really much you could do at that point. Yeah, that was a, just a really good rotation coming out from Rujami. It's very red for anyone for a team to bring the Bristol back to the enemy lane, but because they know how important it is to shut down the TB, they sacrificed a little bit of the farming efficiency of Bristol back and brought him to the top lane to clean up the kill. I'm surprised to see them not staying at the top lane to bring down this tower at least. So that could be some loss of opportunity there. But however, Sentinel has already completed the Vanguard, so if they want to make another dive here, Capitana is in love danger because he's completely Dyer's alone in this lane. She's only level 5, mind you, it's going to be 10 minutes soon. Uh, Capitana here, just a nice little D-Ward Inkswell, that's probably not going to actually connect, even with, okay, alright, yeah, and everybody's going to back off here. And uh, But if we're looking at Gabriella, she's been very largely quiet, hasn't really been, you know, into too many fights or whatever, but she's got 80 last hits, or she will, and 5 denies at this point, at the 10 minute mark, 82, excuse me. That's a pretty darn good lane. Yeah, it is. She's so fat as well. Double now with the arcane boot into the eternal shard. She's going to be the front line, and kind is going to be the initiator with the blink dagger. And it seems seems like Angel is, is really committed to the blink dagger idea because she hasn't she hasn't picked up anything yet. She's just saving up the girl for a blink dagger, really looking to have the first big ravage to help his team seal the deal. All right, I take umbrage of the fact that you just called the Necro player fat. I mean, it's a little disrespectful, dude. <laughs> My bad. My bad. She's really wealthy. All right. She's, really, She's doing really... well in the game. How's that? Oh, but yeah. yeah, her net worth so... is right on top. 500 gold advantage. She's jacked. <laughs> is, is that even worse? Or maybe it's worse. No, no, that's good. That's good. There's an Akin ring, though, at the floor. And Necrophos, you know, she's rich enough that she just... Totally ignore the Akin ring. Okay, she's gonna go back and pick it up now. Yeah, all right, she's got it now, but she's got the hood. Uh, I mean, she's gonna be going Eternal Shroud up next. Mm -hmm. So you've got a little bit of aura. Okay, they found it, the Reaper Scythe into the finger, and they say hello and goodbye. Three ultimates on this Centaur. That's the amount of hate they have for this Centaur. However, they have to quickly just run back to the mid lane to defend this Siege Wave. They cleave for it, and that should be enough for them to defend the wave. Marita does need to be a little bit careful. Inkswell is going to be charged up. They're looking for the, the silence. Oh, they got the soul bond. It connects onto two, though. And here, the Snapfire as well, just raining terror. And they kill Angel. Gabriella oh. is going to get silenced. The TP, not quick enough. Not quick enough, excuse me. Uh, that's not how they want to use the cookie offensively. They put Necrophos in a very bad situation. And that was just really weird because I thought they only wanted to defend. Making offensive move like, move like that without a Ravage or any ultimates feels very risky. Especially when they just show all three ultimates being committed on the Centaur at the bottom lane. That's where Lujami really know that, okay, this is the, the timing for them to fight. Agreed. And Agreed. Yeah, they Amazon really just walk up. into them just like that. So that was a little bit weird there. Yeah, and not only that, because you made a mistake, now you've lost your mid-T1. Uh, and it looks like they want to go for a little bit more, but... Uh, okay, they back off now. Network-wise, T2 
TB is a lit is a gyro is a very far away from the Terra Blade, so that's that's really comes down to the to the good lane that he had at the bottom side. Four kills into 5.6k net worth right now. Very early Maelstrom as well. I like this. I like this pickup a lot. It's a pickup. It's an item that can even snowball harder on your current advantage, and it just helps her um, be on par or be on par with the farming speed of the TB. Mm -hmm. It's definitely going to help out. And uh, Gyro, you you want to be ending as quickly as possible. I, I guess, what is the build order that you go for uh, uh, YS here? I, I would think S and Y BKB would be really good. Okay. Or uh, if, you, if, you, if she wants to be a big greedier, I would say um, skip the S and Y, go for Aghanims and BKB. That would be another way as well. Because Aghanims is just, just too good of an item on Gyrocopter to be skipped. But normally you wouldn't want to build Maelstrom into Aghanims because that's just a little bit too much on farming item. And that, that will be delaying the BKB timing too. So yeah. Maelstrom, S and Y, BKB uh, sounds pretty okay here for SYS. Right, and Lujami, I, I think that like just the amount of magic damage, once you start getting BKBs, uh, Amazon is going to have a really tough time dealing with you in terms of team fights. So I, I think the potential is there, but as I say, that Amazon's knocking on tier two bottom. And Joe, she's so deep. Indeed. They do have the DD on Neko though, and they do end up killing him. Uh, and it looks like they Reaper Scythe, but YS gets finger, does go down. Gabriella just actually able to outheal this so far. Just goes down, the stun is on point. And Mortimer Kisses raining on Capitana. Does she get out? No way. All right, she goes down. That was a pretty good trade coming out from both sides, actually, because why? first of all, Amazons, even though they lost three, they managed to bring down the two very rich cores from Lujami Sai, which are the Gyrocopter and Centaur. And all the time, Terrible has just been sitting in the triangle to farm out the ancient stacks. So I think he sh I think he ma managed to farm two ancient stacks. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not finishing them, but that was a really much needed space for the Terrible. He's gonna get round down by the BB though. Has the oh, the damage. Okay, LV there just like disrespecting three levels higher and uh, forces uh, TB out of the lane. And she's just gonna walk into the ancient stacks and clear all that up. And this is the power of the Bristol back. She's she's that's why he's that's why Bristol back is so good against heroes that can take stacks because he can just easily invade jungle and take all the stacks away from himself. Yeah, I mean you, you you're self reliant. You can do whatever you want, and uh, yeah, even taking the rune there, especially the 15 minutes. But they've got the lead 12-5. The net worth is uh, 2k or so, but they're slowly starting to take away some of the space that you have. Yeah, that's the thing about Amazon. They are, their three cores are so slow. They are not elusive at all. So it's hard for them to be speed pushing. And when you couldn't speed pushing and when you are starting to lose map control, there's just not much plays that you can do on the map. Except for yeah. going for like constantly fighting and constantly smoking, taking risky moves. Other, other than that, it seems like that's their only options here for them to come back really reliably. Oh, they got the Earth Spike, the Mana Drain uh, on LV, who's going to just get Fae bolted as well, but just backs off and uh, shrugs off that damage. And she's almost back to full. Lion is approaching the Bling Dagger timing very soon. And Capitana is having a very good game, despite playing a post 5 Lion, which is sometimes really sacrificial. But because of her amazing play, she's approaching dagger soon i think they want to really wait for this dagger timing because this is really what they needed they don't have any good initiation just yet actually they do tyranter has a deep link dagger already so let's see how they set up for that kill this is their biggest pick right now they have to make something happen with this uh, dagger timing on tight oh they got the lift up they found barita at least who's going to be backing off d ward the, at least the sentry there but um, yeah, Capitana doing pretty well. I mean, you've got two finger of death kills already, and you've almost got a blink dagger, and things looked rough in the first five, ten minutes of the game, but they've really bounced back. Yeah, 3k lead, uh, 3k lead from Lujami here. They are continuing to push the advantage. I like this a lot. They're putting three cores together could commit to one lane to take down the tier two, and this will open up the entire triangle for them and obviously Roshan as well because their heroes are so good in taking Roshan with the Bristol back go with the Snapfire's medallion and also max level leader shadow they will just take down Roshan so fast and that's why Amazons they know that they have to take a fight here oh the stampede and they're just gonna run away Barita just on her uh, horse so to speak or Mortimer 
in this case, and they just kind of run away. But Angel blinks forward, doesn't actually find anything, and uh, a smoke, a, a smoke, pretty much wasted. I think they have to keep going again because this is their biggest timing. If they don't go for for now, they don't have an advantage for much longer. Mm, they might have to do a smoke again just to catch up Lujami, knowing that there's no stampede right now. Everyone from Lujami is quite, kind of spread out to farm for themselves. And this is actually the best timing for Amazon to, to make an attack again. But yeah. they're not doing it though. They're, they're staying on their lanes to push lanes out. I mean, they're being a little patient, right? I, I think they're... Uh, I mean, I think that they're up and they don't realize how much of an advantage they have right now. Or they're, or they're looking for the perfect pickoff, which might be here as they blink forward. They do get the stun as well, the stampede. The Mortimer kisses from downtown doing some work, but... The Soulbind there, the Chinese Finger Trap have them locked in and they're kind of not moving in the same spot. The Reaver Swipe is going to kill the Centaur. So they got that LB is going to run away now. The Inkswell will scare them away from now. And the AOT, and they're just doing some work. Angel does go down. Gabriella's looking to fight solo. Capitana as well. YS is now here, but ZPY doing some work and they're just going to kind of scurry them away. They have to chase, but do they have to disable? Rubik does not have leave. He doesn't have a Ether Lance or a dagger as well. So that will be it. Two for one. A lot of ultimates being exchanged, but I would say that's a pretty good trade for Amazons to take. This is what they need to do. They have to position the Necroforce in front to tank the initiation from the Jami, and then the Tyrant comes in with the counter initiation, Blink Ravish. That's the perfect scenario for Amazon. And, and we saw, I mean, the blink in happened, the ravage as well, but like the fact that like Ty just has pretty much blink, right? Not really tanky, not mm -hmm. really able to just kind of sustain. Um, and once she was focused, she just went down very, very quickly. So um, between a position three tied versus like a position four and five tied that we've seen in, at least in the DPC, you, you need to kind of tank yourself up. And I, I think that Angel does need um, a little bit of farm just to get, to make sure that she can actually sustain in these team fights. Yeah, she definitely needs at least a hood so that she can at least absorb some kind of damage for his team. Otherwise, she's nothing. She's just a support when, without without a ravage. Yeah. So she has to, she has to make, find some way to make herself useful, throwing the bodies into the enemy side, like like what the Centaur did there. Centaur is so tanky. Look at his itemization, Vanguard, Hood, and the Blink. So that's what you want on your off lane in this current meta. You want them to be able to initiate and also absorb damage. Yeah, those are the two biggest ones. And I, I think it was more of the fact that, like, she didn't have a great lane, but she needs to initiate, right? I, I think that you're going to have it now tower. with Lion there, um, Capitan, uh, just getting the blink as well. But now you've got two blinks on the team. You can hopefully make something happen. But right now, Lujiama, they're going to go for the smoke, and they found Ooh. the main target. They go right in on TV, who suckers immediately. Rocket Barrage is going to be used as Soulbind, and nowhere to go, nowhere to run. They kill both of them. This is the perfect smoke. Angel here doesn't even have Ravage, so not really much they can do. Stampede is now going to be used, and this is a stolen one, so this is a pretty big steal there. They found Gabriella. They're going to focus their attention on that. They kill him. Angel was like, all right, all my friends are dead. What do I do? We talked about how explosive Lujami's draft is, and this is their timing right now. With the Blink Dagger on Centaur, they just... Okay, that's a go SOD command coming from Amazon. Um, I think it was a good SOD, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a pretty amazing smoke there. Catch yeah, it out for turning it into Roshan. Very well played by Lujiami so far. I like this itemization coming out from the two cards as well from Lujiami. Sento obviously going for the classic tanky build, plus a dagger. And look at Bristol back. He knows that he does not want to be tank up because he's just gonna be. Um, playing the role of Centaur, and you don't want two heroes, two, two kinds of the same hero, right? So Bristol Bear went for this offensive build with the Aghanims that can just have put, just dish out all this AoE goo that slows everyone, and of course the armor reduction is so, in, uh, is so important as well for the Gyrocopter to, X, to ampli amplify his physical damage. So I, I, I'm absolutely loving, loving this itemization for Bristol Bear. Yeah, it's actually quite good, and, I, and yeah, I agreed with that. Just everything throughout, but... I mean, Scepter, and then, like, I, I guess, what is the eventual build order you want to get to? What do you want? Where do you want to go? On the Bristol back? Yeah. 
Um, I will say some aura items like the AC Shivas, this would be pretty good, or even um, even some Abyssal Blade would be okay too. I think there's a lot of route that Abyssal Blade can go for, knowing that how 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 ahead he is right now. All right, yeah, I mean, they're up 8k, second place in terms of the net worth. Their Gyro YS just kind of taking the top spot for now. So they're in definitely the driver's seat, especially with Aegis. Once you got BKP, I mean, this Gyro is going to be super difficult to deal with, right? Yeah, everyone on the Jummy side is just so tanky with the all three cores. Stampede again, this is the low one. Oh, uh, yeah, and they're going to stampede on stampede on action, but they got Kazumi, not really much of a chance there. Now they're running for their left, trying to get to the high ground. The Soulbind, they do have him locked in. Nice two-man stun there, blink in. But the Centaur there, and they got the goo on everything. Capitano running for their life. They've killed three. What a nice sequence of events again for Lugiama. And that's so scary when you see a Bristol back with a Stampede just running at you with Aghanim's goo. That is some really scary stuff. Especially with Aghanim's, it, it removes the, um, what, what do you call that? The animation move of the Bristol back. So now you, you, you just walk right in and will be spamming all the AoE goos. That's faster Bristol back so, so much. And what can what can AOT, AOT do here? They, they're so countered by the heroes of Bujami. The Phantom Embrace for Green Shield totally destroyed Tyranter there with the silence. He has no way to hit the Phantom Brace, and if he wants to, he has to stay there and, and push up three hits. By the time he does it, he is probably dead. So, yeah, really not much of a chance. And if you're looking at what, you know, Amazons have had to deal with, like, look at this. I, I was thinking, oh, Angel's level 11. She, yeah, she had a rough game or whatever. But then I see Capitano with level 12. And then, of course, ZPY right here, also level 12. Everybody just so low from Amazon. Uh, this is very worrying, minus except uh, Gabriella, who's level 15. Yeah, we haven't seen much from the TV just yet because she has she has not been having a lot of space to farm. She has always been hiding in the triangle, getting getting the ancient creep. But that is not good for her experience wise because she is not getting all the creep wave experience. And this is where Ujami, they want the first thing happen. Oh, they blink for her. They found it. More of our kisses. They're going to do some damage on Gabriella. She's trying to outheal this, but it's just too much. 49 seconds. She does have buyback. Capitana goes down as well. And they've got the soul bind, and they want more. I think that you would probably want to buy back. You got to save what you can. Kazuma, and now the buybacks are coming, but uh, the Ravage is now going to be committed. They found it. And YS, the nice Earth Spike. YS has gone a little too deep, but they do have Aegis. So that's just the first life. But now LV is here. The AoE goo on everything. Everybody. Yes, you have Metamorphosis, but he's kind of getting burned right now. The nice Snapfire Cookie catches on the two. Reaper Sight doing some work in the finger. They do end up killing the Bristol, so that's one way. And they found the Centaur as well, but at what cost? They've gotten three buybacks thus far, and it looks like they're going to just disengage at this point. Oh, they can get... Oh, no! The Impel, the Earth Sprite was just a little bit too slow there. I think that was like 0 0.1 second, 0 .1 second slow. But yeah, they managed to defend this. Uh, most importantly, TB did not have to use buyback. So that was a very big fight for TB to win. Now that he has a lot of space to recover himself. He's one recipe away from the BKB, but three buybacks on the rest of the heroes. Fortunately for them, they did not lose the melee racks. So even though it's costly, it's still pretty successful for them, especially for the TB. So once this TB BKB is up, it's gonna be a lot easier for the TB to output his own damage. But will he, will he have enough damage? That's the biggest problem. I mean, you got the BKB, you've got the uh, SNY already built as well as the Falcon Blade. So I feel like, I mean, usually I, I, I get scared of TBs that end up getting the Scotty. I think that's like the true tipping point when you see like the Super Saiyan uh, mm -hmm. TB. And uh, yeah, she's still a ways away, but really, I don't think she has the time to get all of that, you know, the next big item before the next fight is gonna happen. Yeah, let's see how aggressive Bujami will want to be. Are they sway away from being aggressive after the after the punishment they got there with the dive? Mm -hmm. I would like to I would, I would like to see no, because the heroes are so they they don't have to play with any ultimates. That's the thing. Oh, 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 the blink forward, they found him. Uh, but, you know, LB's on the way. The Stampede's now going to be committed, and they found it in the double edge as well. Yuzumi just gets dis destroyed there. And Angel trying to run. That, that blink it seems very short range. I felt like she could blink a little bit further than that. With this Rubik kill, it seems that like Lujami, they're, they're not stopping. I like this a lot. They know that there's no, uh, there's no rape, uh, sorry, there's no ra ravage just yet. Mm -hmm. But it's up very soon though. But at least they're still invading jungle, putting pressure. Angel, 
She cannot die here? Oh, this is not good. Not where you want to be. Not a tanky watermelon yet. And she goes down. The positioning not great on that one. No buyback. And it looks like they're going to start chipping on this uh, T3 Rax to start. Oh no, Angel. That was a very big mistake. Now it's 60 seconds without the Tender, without the Ravage. This might be at least a pair of Rax for the Jeremy to take. Yeah, I don't think you can fight this without the Tide. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's one set of Rax. It's not the end of the world. You just got to make sure nobody gets picked off and then you continue the losing at this point. Yeah, they have to give up this Rax. If that if that still decides to take this fight, oh King! Oh, they found her. They found her. She's got. Oh, that's exactly what I said. You cannot Is do. It? Look at how down. Oh my God! The TV just Sunder. going down. Under under team. Your no. teammate. No, oh, not able to do it. She should have just uh, sundered her teammate or whatever she could have done. But it looks like that's just too much at this point. A bit of a misplay, but I mean, it kind of started with Gabriella just being out of position. At that point. Yeah, oh, that was a bit painful. It's really bad to, it's really sad to lose the lose the game like that. Angel with the with the death at the ancient camp. That really was the was the invitation for Lujami to just wipe up their entire base. All right, but yes, they might lose, but I think Angel just for the sake of doing it, you blink it, you get a five man ravage just to say you got a five man ravage. True, that's true. Let's go for it. No. And just, you know, for the, for the resume. Yeah, for, the resume. Yeah, yeah. So, for the highlight reel, it's like, yeah, we're losing 30 tonight. But I got a five man Ravage, right? That's the only thing that matters. They call GG. That was very clean coming out from Jami overall. Good draft, good execution. I like how they are snowballing the game together as five. And I like how they are always grouping up together to take towers into Roche. Everything is just very unselfish and clean. Their decision making was really on point. I mean, they just got that. They started to, you know, it was kind of tied. I mean, yeah, they were slightly up in terms of the laning phase, but just being able to, like, you know, take the small advantages that you get and just compound them and just continue to force Amazons to make mistakes in terms of the positioning. Like, Lujiami just looked really, really strong in that game. Absolutely. I like the itemization as well, especially, I have to say this game, especially Agonims on Bristol Back. I think that is. Uh, really amazing coming out from Lujami is the is the item that allows them to be really offensive. And if you look at Gyro as well, Maelstrom, SNY, BKB Satanic, she's not fooling around. She wants to win. Like that's the classic build that a gyrocopter can go for, especially against the Terra Blade. So everything is on point and I'm I want to see more from Lujami right now. I think we 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 are talk about um brand sports, we know how strong Pacific Ping is. Lujami, I think they could be a really strong contender to the powerhouses. All right, well, just checking the brackets, uh, seeing as Lujiami have moved on, it looks in the other game for round two is going to be Brandy Sports for, uh, versus Queen Cententials. Queen Cententials? I'm sorry, these names are killing me. But uh, the winner of that one. So we're going to have a, a pretty great game. That one's going to be coming up. Um, any final words before we go into a break? Uh, nothing much. I think today, the two games that we have watched, the winner, they play some really good Dotas. The loser, they, they tried their best for sure. And there's still another round for them since this is the double elimination. So I wish to see them come back again um, later in the day. And I just can't wait for the, the, the next game to start. Yep. All right. So a uh, quick shout out to our sponsors of Intel, Tokenized Exchange, and Yahoo. This is FSL Dota 2 Open. My name is Holler, and this is Arthur, and we'll be right back.